the last class we have seen <coughs> that any continuous time dynamical system can be discretized and the method of discretization was that we would if it is a autonomous system meaning there is no external periodic function then we would uh, place a Poincare plane any plane in the state space that is called a Poincare plane and you would observe the piercings through the Poincare plane right and what would you do if it is non autonomous that means there is some kind of external forcing you would have to observe it in synchronizing with that external forcing function and that defines the periodicity okay we have also understood that if the system is periodic period 1 limit cycle then on the poincare plane you will see one point as a steady state behavior if it is period 2 it will see two two points period 3 three points and so on and so forth and for chaotic orbit you will see infinity of points okay the question then is that would the infinity of points be scattered just in any any way you would imagine that there is a plane the poincare plane on which there would be a scatter of points but then would the scatter of points have any shape structure organization or is just some points it turns out that always the scatter of points have some structure and that is what tells us about the the that the whole thing is not completely unruly or unorganized there is a very deterministic phenomenon going underneath which is organizing that kind of a structure now whenever you place a poincare plane and you see things happening on that essentially you are seeing a picture right huh? some kind of a portrait of the system and that is often called phase portrait that is often called the phase portrait the phase portrait is nothing but the picture of the orbit in general that refers to chaotic orbit as it appears on the Poincare plane in some books you will also find the same word same phrase used to mean uh, the continuous time orbit in the uh, state space but often that is called a phase plane uh, orbit now uh, let us see some phase plane orbit for example this computer appears to be extremely slow so let us this is the phase, for phase portrait for the Rosler equation for which you have already seen the continuous time orbit right so you see the phase portrait has a very di distinct and definite structure it has an infinity of points all right but it has a very well organized structure are you convinced hmm? so it is not just any any uh, arbitrary shape uh, for any system for example if you do the same exercise for the Lorentz system there also you see a very definite structure in that case it takes the form of like this form of something like this so what do you mean by definite well uh, it has some kind of a uh, well his question is what do you mean by a definite structure uh, see this is not just any way scattered around the the whole thing okay the points fell into a particular shape even though there are infinity of points the infinity of points are in a particular shape and you can almost write an equation for that can you see that so that is what is mean by a definite structure system. now so this is the phase portrait of the Rosler uh, attractor now what we what, what what do we do next next in the in the Rosler system as you have seen earlier that as you are changing a parameter the behavior goes from a periodic orbit period 1 orbit 
to a period 2 orbit to a period 4 orbit you have seen that right. And we would like to understand that might happen for any system, any practical system and we might like to understand how the behavior of the system changes as you change a parameter. Now, as I told you that if you look at the phase portrait, then when it is period 1, it is just 1 point, when it is period 2, there are 2 points, when it is period 3, 3 points and now there are uh, an infinity of points. The point is that as you are changing a parameter, all these are happening. So, you would like to have a complete picture of the, the events that go on as you change a parameter, because in a practical system, there would be some parameters and you would like to know in which parameter range what kind of stable system behavior pertains. Okay. There is a nice way of doing that. Invented by the people in nonlinear dynamics, there is a nice way of, of, of plotting the behavior as a parameter is changed. That is called the bifurcation diagram. Uh, where there, what we essentially do is, now let us look at this. Let us look at the uh, paper. If you have a a system where the behavior is some kind of a periodic orbit and you have placed a point at a section somewhere here and you are observing this point, right. As you are changing a parameter, this point, this behavior changes to say something like this. So, you are ob observing now these two points. Now, on the point at a plane, there would be one x coordinate, another y coordinate. Suppose you observe one of them and you keep on keeping track of the subsequent values of this x on the point plane. Then what will happen in this case? You will see all the points having the same value of x. Okay. If, you, if you make a data set containing some hundred subsequent points of x, you will find all of them having the same value. In this case, in this case, you will find 50 of them having this value and 50 of them having that value and they toggle in the sense that this point goes to goes to this point and this point goes to this point, right. That is what we will see. So, you will see a pair of points, okay. Now, the way to draw the bifurcation diagram is for a particular parameter value, eliminate the transient allow the system behavior to settle onto its asymptotically stable behavior and then plot some hundred such discrete points. These are discrete points, plot the discrete points. So, what will happen if the, the parameter value is such parameter is plotted in the x axis and those points are plotted on the y axis. If the parameter value is such that all the points fall on the same location, you will see only one point. If the parameter value is such like this period 2 orbit that the two values of x would toggle between two things, then you will see two points and so on and so forth. And as you change the parameter, then you can study the system behavior. Hmm. And this is often done by the help of uh, Poincare maps and I will just show you. So, if you if you observe if you observe this, then this is the bifurcation diagram of the logistic map that I uh, brought forth in the last class. Uh, logistic map means the one that you saw in the last class mu x n 1 minus x n. Right? We had seen that initially the behavior would be period 1 and all that, I will come to that, but here you see the looking at this, it would be immediately clear to anybody that in this range up to this parameter value, the behavior was period 1. No? What does it mean? It means that at this point where my cursor is, can you see the cursor? Yeah. Uh, at that point, actually there were a large number of points, but all the points fail on the same location. That is why you see just one point here, another point here, one point here. But here for this parameter value, here the r is being varied, the parameter is being varied. 
there are two points and at this point there are four points at this point there are eight points so by looking at this anybody would be able to immediately say that from this point this parameter value to that parameter value the behavior was period 2 from this parameter value to that parameter value the behavior was period 4 and so on and so forth so this gives you a sort of panoramic view of the stability status for some range the period 1 behavior is stable for another range period 2 behavior is stable for another range period 4 behavior is stable and so on and so forth by the way uh, okay, I'll, I'll I'll come back to this later. Okay. Now let us let us see what we saw in the last class as a behavior of the logistic map. Here we have said r is equal to zero point two. As a result, okay, let us let us change the parameter to say one. R is mu, yeah. Uh, what I wrote as mu here, they are using an R, so it's the same thing. So, see, if you change it to one, then also you starting from something like 0 0.6, and it is decaying to zero, right? That is what you expected by doing the calculation. If you change it to two. is not decaying to 0 it is ultimately stabilizing at some value can you see that okay. change it to 2.5 is stabilizing to another value right 2.9 is stabilizing to another value see there is some kind of oscillation but nevertheless it is coming down to a stable value good but now let us change it to 3.1 so the last day you did the calculation i asked you to do that and you saw that at a certain parameter value which was you calculated it to be 3 right and at that parameter value the <coughs> period 1 orbit becomes unstable and the period okay i'll, I'll, I'll show you why, why it happened So, when you see on the, the uh, bifurcation diagram, when you saw in the bifurcation diagram, that the period 1 behavior is changing to a period 2 behavior, naturally it raises the question why. And now we are trying to answer that question why. Again, if I can answer what is happening here. <coughs> then it is not difficult to see that a similar thing is happening here again a similar thing is happening here do you notice that what is happening is essentially repetition of the same kind of event so it essentially demands the explanation of one of them then you can extrapolate that same explanation to to find out what is happening in the rest so let us start with the equation that we uh, wrote the last time x n plus 1 is equal to mu x n 1 minus x n that is where we started what was the method of analysis we said that the x n star which is the fixed point is given by the left hand and right hand side are equal so x n star 1 minus x n star solve it you get the location of the point right and you had already seen that the there are two positions hmm? there are there are two uh, equilibrium points and we had decided that 45 degree line is a important thing that we need to watch out for and it's it has a curve something like this so there are two points at which they intersect one is at zero the another is at one by uh, mu minus one by mu. Okay, so that is the point. The issue is then, why did this 
orbit become unstable at a certain point. This was the orbit that we are observing here. When we are observing this point, we are observing it this one and not this one. Hmm? Why not this one? For that, we had already seen. See again, again recall what we said in the last class. If say this is the 45 degree line and the graph of the map is like this having a slope less than unity, then if you start from here, remember the graphical analysis that I talked about, it will go like this, you have to go to the 45 degree line, you have to come back here, you have to come back here, so on and so forth, it converges. If the slope is at that, that value is greater than 1, then you start from a point, you see diverges right so we had concluded that the st stability of the equilibrium point depends on a slope or the derivative of the map at the equilibrium point at the fixed point so naturally whether or not a particular fixed point will be stable depends on what the slope there. Now, here you can see the slope is larger than unity and therefore, this point even though that is a fixed point, the orbit will not stay there. Here the slope is less than unity, so the orbit will stay there. Okay, fine. So, we have the, the map expressed like this and we are interested in the derivative d x n plus 1, d x n is, is mu minus twice mu, right. If you take the derivative, you get this. So, if you talk about the equilibrium point or fixed point at the origin at the uh, 0 position, then you would put 0 here. As a result, the derivative will be just mu, which means that so long as mu is less than 1, this point will be stable, right. So long as it is less than 1, this point will be stable and that is exactly what we observed when we, when we did this less than 1, say 0 0.9. zero is stable right things are converging to zero so the zero point is stable then what about the other one now do this exercise put this position of the equilibrium point of the of this fixed point here and evaluate this huh? so uh, for x n star is 0, it is and for x n star is equal to what was it mu minus 1 mu minus no? That, that is it? Uh -huh d x n plus 1 by d x n is 2, if you substitute this here, at what value of mu then would you expect this particular uh, equilibrium point to become uh, stable? Wait. Here mu minus this, huh? Okay. Uh, one to three, it will be stable. So this one would be stable up to one, and this one would be stable up to three. 
fine let us see let us change the the range of the bifurcation diagram uh, where is it where is the parameter Okay, not that. Fine. So we have decided that this fellow will be stable from uh, zero to one, and this fellow will be stable from one to three. At this three point, when the parameter value becomes three, I expect this fellow to be unstable. And that's exactly how what is happening here. At three, I know that this fellow will become unstable. Okay. If it is unstable, then obviously if I keep on iterating the, this map, the iterates will not go there, and that is exactly why you do not see this line extending after that. Hmm? That is why you do not see this line extending after that. But this calculation tells you that this point is anyway there. Even when you set mu is say 3.5. This value is there. You can calculate this value, which means that this value is there. This point is there, but now it is unstable. So try to understand the distinction between things not existing and things existing but is unstable. In both cases, you don't see them, but only theory allows you to understand that this value is there, <coughs> and there would be effects of that. It will have its own dynamical effects. I'll come to that later, but. Try to understand that when it becomes unstable, still the period one orbit is there, but it's unstable. Okay. Now let us see what happens when when this fellow becomes unstable. Means when you have changed the parameter to a value greater than three. What do you expect? In order to see what you expect. Uh, we try to we, we definitely know that the period one orbit has become unstable we either expect the the orbit to diverge to infinity or we would expect some other orbit to become stable so we start by checking if period two is stable period four is stable or not that so let's see if period two is stable how do you find out if period two is stable on the on the bifurcation diagram of course you can but that is only simulation it's not theory so let's let's try to do it theoretically. You have x n plus one is equal to mu x n one minus x n. Therefore, x n plus two is mu x n plus one one minus x n plus one. Right. Substitute this, you get mu square. X n one minus X n for this one, and for this one one minus mu X n one minus X n. Right. This is a fourth order polynomial equation, and its roots will tell you. So, in order to find out where are the Equilibria, equilibrium points are fixed points of the the period two orbit. What will you have to do? You will have to say x n plus two is equal to x n. Hmm? Because oh, why? Because because if you are trying to check if the if if you are trying trying to check for the period one orbit, what do you do? You said that uh, in order to check that, I have to set x n plus 1 is equal to x n. So, if you are now trying to check if period 2 orbit is stable, then what will you have to do? You have to set x n plus 2 is equal to x n. So, you will have to set this. So, you arrive at an equation something like this x n star, we will have to substitute it here, is equal to mu square x n star 1 minus x n star. 1 minus mu x 
right it is a fourth order equation in x n and you have to solve it you might tell me that oh it's too difficult it's fourth order equation fourth order equation we have never learned how to solve hmm? notice the argument if a fixed point is the fixed point of the period one orbit that must also be a period uh, a, a fixed point for the period two orbit is that clear yes why because because if the point comes back to the same location every iterate then obviously it will come back to the same location every second iterate also right which means that earlier we had found two locations for the period one fixed points they must also be roots of this one they must also be roots of this equation so you already know two roots you only need to factorize the rest so you have to take out those two roots one is already there take it out zero okay and take out the other one take out the other one means the one that is at mu minus 1 by mu extract that and you have only a quadratic which you need to solve is the point clear well if it is clear still this needs to be expressed in those two uh, factors term uh, can you do that it's not difficult though but i can write it huh? so this is x n plus 2 is equal to x n i'm writing from here x n uh, 1 minus mu plus mu x n this is the second root i have already written this uh, two roots and i have to find out what is to be multiplied here so that i get this okay so if you want to do this you can do but i can uh, write what is there plus mu to make the calculation shorter but in the exams you will have to do it yourself we have factored it into this root this root which you already know and these are the two new roots that have appeared clear okay notice notice the line of argument we have written the expression for x n plus 2 in terms of x n now we say that now in order to find the location of the fixed point i have to equate the left hand side and the right hand side Huh? What? No, no. You you will have to put it, put the left hand side equal to the right hand side. <coughs> huh? Or right, 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 right. I'll have to put zero. Huh? fine so now you have after you have you have substituted this we have taken out those roots which are also the roots of the 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 period one equation the logic was that if there is a, a root or a fixed point of the period one solution then it must also be a root of the period two solution therefore these are already known roots which are not we are not looking for we are looking for the additional ones which are here so if you now do that you get uh, x star um, we have to give a separate name because x star was the the uh, x2 star hmm? then equal to 1 plus r plus minus root over r 
sorry mu mu square minus twice mu minus 3 divided by twice mu is it legible yes yes mu okay so these two are the new roots these two are the roots of the period 2 orbit in fact that is exactly what you see here these are the two positions huh? now let us further notice that this one the one that is inside the square root that can be factored huh? so this can be factored as mu plus 1 and all right so if you can factor this also notice that this fellow inside must be positive because you are looking for real root if you are looking for real root this fellow must be positive and therefore therefore what is the conclusion you get real root real solutions only when mu is greater than 3 okay only when mu is greater than 3 so between 1 and 3 this fellow is positive but this fellow is negative and therefore here you get a negative number so huh? we are assuming mu is not negative yes <coughs> we are assuming that it's varying between 0 and upwards hmm? because you see as i told you that this equation came from the from the uh, <coughs> modeling of populations and mu represented how good is the environment for that population and obvious reasons that cannot be a negative number hmm? if it is very bad it is zero hmm? so we had earlier concluded the period one orbit is stable up to three and it becomes unstable at three we now conclude that the period two orbit starts to exit exist after three not before that okay it doesn't exist before that it starts to exist now that is why i wanted you to distinguish between existence and stability here it starts to exist at 3 we have concluded that good is it stable naturally we need to probe that question is it stable stability is again probed by as i told you you have to write down the d x n plus 2 in terms of and since you have the expression you can always do the differentiation you can do that do that while you do that let me do a roundabout manner let me do it in a roundabout manner i will say you know that if you have a function of x then you can write df dx is equal to df dg dg dx you can write that now if you say that this g the f is x n plus 2 g is x n plus 1 then you can write it in in in, in two separate uh, parts okay so what do you have ultimately how does it get written as you have the second derivative of x this one it becomes the derivative of of 
times the derivative of right so what does it mean it means that very wrong okay it means that if i have like this and i have one point here another point here these two solutions then all i need to do is to have the slope here and have the slope here the slope ultimately of this one is nothing but a product of these two slopes right so ultimately if we want to calculate the total slope of this one then you could do the hard way writing down the whole expression uh, uh, in the derivative form put the locations and then extract the number all right we can do that but it's easier since we have the expression for the derivative of the first first equation huh? so here th this one is d x n plus 1 d x n and here also it is e x n plus 1 d x n now simply multiply these two that's what it says all right so in order to calculate the stability of the period 2 orbit all we need to do in a simpler way of calculation simply calculate the first derivative at these two points and the points are given by this okay now let us see what actually is happening this is the way of calculation okay from now onwards we will in general not do it the long way because you can easily understand the moment it goes into a third third iterate or fourth iterate it will be it will be going out of hand you won't be able to do that but you still will be able to do it this way because if it is fourth iterate all you need to do is to find out the four points and find out the the slopes multiply them that is the stability of the four fourth iterate so in order to go forward in our discussion we will have to take this route <coughs> now you see let us do the graphical analysis here this is the graph of the map hmm? and this is the graph of the map for the value of mu as 1 now let us change the value of mu to 2 you see the the this point has now become its slope has now become greater than unity and therefore this point is now unstable and this one is this now stable point as you can see it started from the uh, iterate started from here 0.3 it went up like this went to the 45 degree line went up like this went to the 45 degree line and this way it converges onto the this point clear let us increase it further to 2.5 or 6 something like that still it does the same thing huh if you zoom this part then also you can see same thing is happening okay if you zoom it further you see it becomes a almost a straight line and the argument that it gave now can be seen in action okay it is going like this and it is finally converging because the slope is less than unity now let us increase to 3 and let's do the calculation as to uh as to uh it's easier for me to just restart it all over again <coughs> okay so where were we we were in 3 uh, notice what is happening 
if I if I start from a point somewhere here, here it goes like this and then it is going on and on. Let me increase the number of iterations to 100, you see ultimately coming very close to the <coughs> this point, but the rate of convergence is very slow. Okay. Let us change it to 0.4, then you can see it very clearly. Okay. What is happening? After having done this, it has again diverged out and ultimately it has come this point, maps to this point and maps to this point. So, on the x scale you will find this point is mapping to this point and that is mapping back to this point and that is mapping back to this point and that is exactly what you see like this period 2. So, what is the mechanism of the generation of the period 2 from period 1? What is the mechanism of the generation of period 2 from period 1? It is essentially that the period 1 orbit becomes unstable. Its slope, the derivative becomes what? No. Exactly at this point, what is the value of the slope of the period 1 orbit? Minus 1, yes. Because minus 1, not just plus 1 or minus 1, it is just minus 1. Remember that. Beyond that, it becomes less than minus 1 and that is why the slope is greater than unity. And at the same point, point of where, same value of the parameter, the period 2 orbit <coughs> starts to exist. That is what you have seen. And the period 2 orbit then is stable. If you, if you, if you do this calculation simply by these are the two points, put them into the derivative equation calculate the slopes, multiply them, you will find them that is less than 1, it is stable, clear. There is another way to, to see that it is stable. Uh, let us take a value close to this, okay. so it has gone here and finally it has diverged out and it has converged to these two points. So, what you need to calculate is this slope and that slope. Okay. Now, try to understand a simple logic. The logic is that here the slope is changing fast, here the slope is changing slow. At this point, the slope is le less than minus 1, this point has become unstable. So, now in order to calculate the slope of the period 2 orbit, what do you have to do? you will have to multiply this slope and that slope. So, just keep on imagining and, and notice where I am placing my cursor. If you go this point, it will map to this point, but the two slopes are almost the same. Again, this point multiplied, this slope multiplied with this slope, again that slope multiplied with this slope, you would see that this slope is not changing much, but this slope is reducing very fast. Therefore, there must come a time when, not the time, a parameter value when this slope times this slope becomes equal to or less than 1 and therefore that must be stable. Again, here the slope is negative, here the slope is negative, multiply them what do you have? The positive slope. So, you have a positive slope that is less than 1. Okay. Now, let us see the behavior in this second composition. What I have drawn here is <coughs> the x n plus 2 as a function of x n. I have already written that. Here is x n plus 2 as a function of x n equation. This equation can also be plotted and that is what I have done. The moment you do that, you notice that at that parameter value the period 1 was like this same way, but the period 2 is a two humped map with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 intersections with the 45 degree line therefore, 4 fixed points. Out of that 2 were also the fixed points of the period 1 orbit which are the this and that. 
0 will continue to be, but notice and remember that this is also a fixed point of the period 1 orbit. That has now obtained a slope that is greater than 1, can you see that? Let us draw it for a little bigger value so that you can clearly see that. Yeah, this fellow is unstable now, but it is there. The fixed point is there, but it is unstable now. So, if you start from initial condition very close to that, as you can see here, it diverges out, but does cannot diverge to infinity, it converges to this point. Okay, it converges to this point. So, here you have in the period 2 orbit, two new equilibria, new fixed points are born, one here, another here. Remember, they are mirror image of each other in the sense that if you start at this point, next iterate it will go there and if you start from there, it will come here. But this one, what I plotted here, here is a period 2 orbit, that means it is x n plus 2 as a function of x n. So, this fixed point in x n plus 2 in this particular system will map to the same point. Is that clear? See, if you if you if you draw a first composition in the state, first composition means x n plus 1 as a function of x n. See, it is like this. This point mapping to this point, this point again mapping to this point. But now, if you plot it as x n plus 2 as a function of x n then this point will keep on map mapping here. If you start it here, it will keep on mapping here. These are the two new fixed points, clear? These are the two new fixed points. Now, since the slope is a composition here, composition means, notice what this right hand side is saying. This one is the derivative, the slope calculated at, uh, let me plot the one, yes, this one is calculated here and that one is calculated here, their product we are talking about, okay. When we talk, okay, now you can see, no, okay, you, you, you can see this. So, these two you are, we are talking about. Now, look at the computer screen now, yes. It is a product of this slope and that slope. So, what you could do analytically, you can also reason out. It must be that. It must be that way. That means, the, the, the period 2 orbit must become stable, not anything else. Because, the, there must be a particular slope here, the way the slope is reducing first, there must be a point at which the, the product becomes less than unity. Okay. So, now we have got a little time. So, we will say that this is the reason why you have only this kind of a phenomenon happening. So, that slope, that one slope will be always minus 1 only. At, at which point? This one you are talking about? Huh? Yes. Uh, his question is that at this point, will the slope be always minus 1? Well, we have analyzed the situation where it is minus 1, okay. And whether or not it is always minus 1, we will probe this question later. Because in order to generalize, we have to take out many possible situations and analyze. But notice one thing that if in the graphical analysis, we have here the slope minus 1. And as a result of that, the period 2 orbit has become stable. Now, try to reason with yourself. The other way for a periodic orbit to become unstable is to have the slope plus 1. If it is plus 1, then if you, if, if you look at the thing that I am drawing, drawing here, it should be something like this. Uh, well, the, the fixed point, at that point the slope is plus 1 or this point at this slope is like this, okay. It will be something like that. What that results in, I will come to that later. I will come to that later. But that does not result in 
a period doubling. So, what you have seen here, what, what you have seen here is a, a period doubling phenomenon. Now, remember when we are talking about this, we have abstracted one stage from the actual thing was a com complete orbit. We had placed a Poincare section and then said that here is what I am seeing. And in this Poincare section, we have seen that it period doubles, means that a periodic orbit becomes like this. And that is exactly what you have seen, exactly what you have seen earlier when we were considering the, the differential equations, their orbits, the limit cycles. We have seen that is exactly what happens. We have seen multiple examples in which period 1 became period 2 became period 4. So, that is a period doubling cascade. Here we have what is known as a period doubling cascade, okay. what is known as a period doubling cascade. So, can you now argue out what is happening here? This is as you can see close to uh, 3 point, no this is 3.4, 3.45 something like that, okay. let us just put it 3.45 and see what is happening, see it has become period 4, right, it has become period 4. So, let us now see what has happened to the second iterate of the map. Now, this point and that point they have also they are also losing stability. Huh? So, if you if you make it 3.5 it will be clearer. Okay. So, this point has earlier was stable, this, this point earlier was stable, they have also lost stability. And if you now draw the fourth composition x n plus 4 as a function of x n, now you will see this is the graph, it will be ugly to write it down, uh, it will be very ugly to write it down. Nevertheless, you can always do that by MATLAB or something like that, you can always get it plotted. If you plot, get it plotted, you will find that now out of this, how many intersections will be there with the 45 degree line, how many fixed points will be there? Notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, there will be 8 intersections. Out of that, 1, 2 will be also the fixed points of the period 1 orbit, which are there? 1, 2, 2 will be also the fixed points of the period 2 orbit, which, which are there here and here. But now around this again 2 fixed points have appeared, around this again 2 fixed points have appeared, that is why it goes from period 2 to period 4. And it is not difficult to see that further the same logic will ap apply, so you will have a evolution from period four to period eight, period eight to period sixteen and so on and so forth. That is why you have period doubling cascade, which is very common, which is very common in nature, in engineering, in various kinds of uh, types of fields. This kind of a change of the asymptotically stable orbit as you change a parameter is very common. Okay. Is the reasoning behind the period doubling cascade understood? Okay. We will come to the issues of universality and other things in the next class. Hmm. Okay. Thank you.